Well, it is quite tricky and it is not over yet. We have only started a good year ago. Uh, we provide now the services and we're not even full all perfect. So we're still in the baby shoes. Still small things have to be improved. But I would say we're 70-80% on its way. And uh, the thing is we live in a parallel universe afterwards. There will be the old postal going to continue. And there will be the new one side by side. I think postal services are, will be there, they are there today, will be there. Um, there is a knowledge of postmen because they go every day to every single household, they know a lot about people, they know a lot about society, and today that's not explored enough. Um, I could illustrate that, for example, I believe in the future, um, there could be a way of saying, right, I'm gonna ring at the doorbell for a few euros to pay, and the service will be, I will check if the old person has taken the pill, if the old person is all right. I might help them even fill out the electricity or gas bill payment, uh, have a social role. Uh, and if I take one or two or three euros a day, not more, f per household, that could be substantial because then it could take it off the state bill with somebody else doing. So I can see even social roles like this. Deliveries of post will be gone to 90% in 10 years. Uh, yes, there will be parcel deliveries, there will be packages, but there might be completely different businesses to be done. I'm a very positive man. Um, the, uh, that's why I took on the challenge, because remember, I'm only in this company now for two years, coming from the private sector, so to say going over there and saying, right, there is something to be done. Postal companies can do things. It is not easy, but that's with any given big company. So I'm saying there is a positive future. There needs to be a lot of changes. And I think we're on our way to do so. But it's the same, the same story is you have legislation forcing you to, to provide certain services. As I say today, we must go to every household every day of the week. I'd rather bring you the letters on a Friday and don't go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but I'm not allowed to. So that is a post law uh, imp imposed on us. And on top of it, we get less and less letters, yet the, 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 the way to go is the same. So we cannot cut corners there very much. And that is the biggest challenge. We, we had uh, around, uh, yeah, we had all, all post offices were still post office until last year. We closed down quite a lot of them. And the idea, the strategy, the strategy behind this, that there's going to be very few big ones left over who are going to be as passe post, as we say with the French uh, 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 wording, meaning you can buy postal services, stamp, you can do a bank transaction, you can make a bank transaction, or you can buy a phone. So it's gonna be a telecom, it is a telecom shop, uh, it is a postal service, so to say, where you can pick up or to bring your parcels, and it is a bank. So this is the, the shared environment, and we established these in very few big cities with their own shops, quite large and quite investment, that's the idea. That's what we're gonna do in Luxembourg, is one part. And then, of course, postal offices will be closed down. So there, there are going to be very few new modern ones left where you can do multiple transactions over multiple uh, professional or multiple business units, so to say, for the country. And then you have the international business, which I'm developing, which I explained earlier on. The good thing is, with such a small country, that Luxembourg cannot really do harm to the big economies around. So if we get a one or two percent share of something, uh, what the others are doing, they don't really feel it. And for us, it's quite a lot. So, and because we play, we are a bit neutral. Um, we're a bit under the radar, trying to do partnerships with the German side and the French side. It's all fine. So I can see that as, you know, it's not, 
humongously scalable, but that's not what we want to do. It's big enough for a small country like Luxembourg. Now, um, like I say, there is businesses where we have no chance, uh, but there are businesses, or there are businesses like uh, what we're doing now, the postal comes in with customs clearance advantages, pricing advantages of delivering letters. You order a tie and it comes in as a letter, it costs a fraction of a parcel, and that can only be done by a postal provider. Therefore, there is ways to compete, but, and there's ways you can't. So you have to find your, your niche and your way forward. Maybe I'm not that smart enough. You can leave it in, I don't know. So um, there is knowledge of a postman knowing that this, this old lady lives in that house and she goes out this time of the day and that time of the day and she has this habit or that habit or this old man has this. So this information, which is not data today punched in, could be converted into data and used to deliver, pick up, sell, upsell, cross-sell product services. Now, do I see that for Luxembourg at the minute? I'm not sure because it's such a small country as well. But once it's mass produced, maybe. What I can see is what I said earlier on is not artificial intelligence, but I see other services doing more for the community, for the state helping, or completely other services. In Finland, the postman mows the lawn. So you can actually pay the post, you go to work, you come back and your grass is cut. The guy has a key, has access somewhere behind. And so these are the things, artificial intelligence, um, I don't see it for us in a small now, if you want to become European or global, and through acquisitions by companies, that's a different story. Then we have a different market, different services. Tricky. It will slow down the process as it used to be. I hope they won't come back. I, I personally was born near the Belgium-Dutch border. I, was grown, I grew up with three, four currencies in my wallet and trucks standing days at the border to get across. I mean, you know that from Czech Republic too. And therefore, the freedom of moving around of people and, and goods is something which I very much is uh, taken at heart. So I hope they will not be coming back. If so, Brexit being one, there will be a slowdown in ease of trade. But there's always a chance because as we see in, in, in England, uh, companies are, you know, moving their offices partially, entirely, closing down or not, two places and Luxembourg is, a, is not a bad place to be in. It has to be something which completely changes the world. Uh, for example, what three words is something I, it's just an example, which completely changes the ball game of, of how we work and look at things. These kind of companies or others, I would put money in because things will be completely different. And uh, yeah, I don't have an exact answer. We now invested in a company, which I cannot disclose because the signature isn't dry yet, which does as well a booking.com kind of company for parcels throughout Europe with a very smart platform, a smart, very smart way of doing, this is where we'll put things in. But yeah, so here you are. I'm not sure if that helps. <laughs>